Hello, hello, and welcome to this video. Um, I'm thinking of it as getting through tough times together. This is the second coronavirus, kind of the time of coronavirus update that I'm doing in video form. And I also want to welcome you if you are listening to this week's We Turned Out Okay episode, because what I'm going to do, hopefully through the magic of, uh, well, primarily the magic of uh, the 23-time winner, 22-time winner of the Husband of the Year Award, Benjamin Culp, I'm hoping that we can make this video also uh, that I'm recording in audio and that it could be the uh, the head of our like the beginning of the podcast episode that's coming out this Tuesday because um, I want to give you the chance to um, hear it and know that I'm doing these as well um, I'm doing these updates every couple days as I am traveling and uh, like so we we started traveling about a week and a half ago my youngest son and I and in that time I mean things were relatively normal when we left and in that time we have just seen just mayhem and and um no food at the grocery store and all sports everything canceled and in fact all concerts and all 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 school right and and um everything that you can think of and i um i wanted to do these because i was feeling worried and and helpless and um i thought perhaps you were feeling you might be feeling that way as well and so i thought why don't i make a series of, of videos that can help us get through this together and so that's what this one is um what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a link in the show notes to the first one and i'm going to encourage you to either go to we turned out okay.com slash weekly okay spelled okay um or go to youtube and search karen lock culp because um i'm going to be as i say i'm going to be doing these and um i can give you notifications if you're in if you're in our email news group and you can find out that i'm going live or you can find out that anyway that i've posted something um if i if you're a subscriber on youtube so um, I also, I guess the other thing I wanted to say is I want you to put on your earmuffs for this part of this episode. Um, this is not, I think, something that, that I may drop an F-bomb or two. It's just been that kind of week. And, um, uh, and this, so the story that I'm going to tell soon, uh, there is an F-bomb in that already. So, um, we'll see, we'll see how I do it, but you might want to listen, listen away from kiddos, put on your own headphones or earmuffs and just, um, you know, settle in. I, and also you can probably hear in my voice, it's real scratchy. I am, um, I'm better, but I'm recovering from something that was likely, you know, it, all the best experts that I talked to, including doctors and nurses and stuff like that, told me that it was probably not the coronavirus. There's a very good chance it was not. It was most likely the flu, to be honest. Um, and I am better now, but my voice is still not quite better. So um, hopefully, you know, you can, you can hear this and, and, and get past that. I really, really hope so. So um, this morning before I'd even woke up, woken up. So I am in, I'm in mountain time. We're um, staying up in the Rocky Mountains where my parents live. Um, my husband is at home in Massachusetts. So that's two hours later. So, um, at about quarter past seven, my time, I was woken up. So Ben has a, the text sound that he has goes like this. It goes ding, ding. And, um, what happened this morning was sometimes it'll glitch a little bit. And so what I heard, I wasn't even awake yet. And what I heard was ding, ding, ding. And it sounded like my first thought was, oh no, you know, something's wrong. And before I was even awake, I was already crying. And um, he was he was literally texting to find out, um, I, he wanted me to send him a chili recipe so that he could make some chili for tonight's dinner for him and, and um, you know, our other son and other people out there. Um, and I was lying there in bed thinking, and I'm crying, right? And I'm thinking, what the fuck is going on here? I don't even know. Like, um, and I just was thinking about all the awful things and maybe we won't even be able to get home and maybe maybe all these awful things. And I'm sure the reason, I, as I say, the reason I wanted to do these updates is because I feel very sure that you are also experiencing this. Um, maybe not in quite this way. What that ended up for me was pretty well a full on anxiety attack at quarter past seven in the morning before I was even fully awake. And I can laugh about it now, but this morning it was, it was pretty tough. Um, and I wanted to share what helped uh, and uh, what helped immediately and what I've been doing ever since during the day to, to stay positive and to, to, you know, once I've come out of this anxiety attack to kind of not go back in it. And I really want to do that because I'm hoping that it can be helpful for you if you're experiencing these same kind of anxieties, what with all of the upheaval and all of the uncertainty. You know, there's a lot of things we cannot control. And that's what really got a hold of me this morning were the things I couldn't control. Um, and I want to, to try and help you through the things when you're worrying about the things that you can't control. So immediately what helped was um, I remembered uh, some breathing exercises that I've been taught. Um, I'm very, very excited because 
uh, Janine Halloran, who's a good friend of the podcast. Um, she's been a sponsor of the podcast. In fact, actually, she could be sponsoring this episode if you're listening to this in podcast. Um, she's a licensed mental health counselor, and what she does is she works um, to help people build coping skills. And um, I'm really excited because she's invited me to, uh, to read her upcoming book. She's got a forthcoming book called Coping Skills for Teens, and she asked for my um, endorsement of it, and she, you know, and which just made me feel so good. Janine, if you're listening, thank you so much for that. Um, and so I'm reading this book, and it's helping. So she referenced a particular kind of breathing that, um, that I do. I've done this literally every morning. I'm not even kidding. Every single morning and every single night without fail since my hands... Uh, since I started having the tendon disorder that I live with, it started affecting my hands, which is now back in like 2013 or 2014. So it's been at least six years and maybe seven years that I've been doing this breath. It's called a four, seven, eight breath. And what you do, it's, it's funny, it's, it's hard to, um, it's hard when you first start, but um, if you stick with it, you, you know, it, it can be really, really helpful. So what you do is you inhale for four, a count of four, and then you hold your breath for a count of seven, and then you exhale for a count of eight. And um, when I first started doing it, it was recommended by a, an author named Dr. Andrew Weil. Um, and he said, start with, start with four. Don't, you know, move up to eight after a month or so, but start with four. Because it, it, is, it sounds surprisingly easy. It sounds like it would, it would not be that difficult to do, but it really is. And I've been doing it at altitude lately, which is like, whew. Um, I, my parents live at about 10,000 feet or so um, above sea level, so uh, any breathing stuff is like crazy. So anyway, um, that was the first thing that I did to help me get myself under control, get out of this anxiety attack. Um, the second thing I did was I remembered um, something that, that we talk about a lot in the ninja parenting community where I work really closely with parents. Um, a couple of parents have referenced this recently, or I think I referenced it for one, and then another member referenced it back to me in, in terms of something that was happening in her life, and that is this. We need to look at what is right in front of us. We can't look down the road a couple of months and, and worry about all the, all the stuff that might have happened since, you know, since now to then, right? Because if we do, that's really what was happening with me. I was lying there thinking, I'm never going to be able to get home. You know, um, our, our plane won't be able to fly or something catastrophic will happen with it and and um and I, I i really needed to remember you know what you need to look at what is right in front of you right now and and um that was so after the four seven eight breathing that was the thing that made me able to get up <laughs> get out of bed um go see how my son was doing because he's also uh, he's on the mend but he he and i both had this flu so um I was able to do that, you know, I was, I was able to think to myself, okay, it doesn't matter what's happening tomorrow or Tuesday or next week or not in the fall or, you know, we, we need to focus on what's happening right now and, and live through this moment, uh, be in this moment, and then we can worry about um, the next moment and the next one. And, and when we do that, especially when we're thinking positively, uh, it becomes much more likely that the next moment is also going to be a positive thing. And, and some things will happen to us that are scary and awful. Um, but we need to remember in this moment that we are, that, you know, that, that we are doing the best we can. We are looking at this moment to see what solutions can we come up with right now for what is happening right now, instead of kind of what my therapist calls catastrophizing, looking out towards the future and thinking, you know, only that it might be bad because you know what, it might also be good. Like good things can also happen in the future and it can be hard to remember that. So, so trying to stay focused on, on dealing with this thing right in front of us right now and then moving on to the next. Um, and then the third thing that helped me was um, be, was thinking of myself as a helper. So my dad and I were talking today and he was telling me about a psychologist that he was watching on TV last night. And what she was saying was, um, no matter how bad it is for you, you know it's gonna be worse for somebody else, somebody that you know and love. And so um, think about how you can help within your family, within your community, um, first of all, that's going to be helpful for everybody. But second of all, um, being a helper means um, feeling better ourselves. So when we are focused on helping other people, um, we are much, much, we're, it's much more, we're much more able to be positive. And I guess one thing I think about is um, one time I brought, you know, a bunch of stuff from our house to, or things that we had purchased for a, um, a Santa sort of gift drive. I forget what those Santa's elves or something kind of gift drive. 
And when I was there, there was a woman kind of sorting through things. Basically, we were just invited to put stuff in, in you know, in the most appropriate place for what, is it a boy is, or a girl? Is it a young person or an older kid? And, and this woman was sort of sorting through things. And I had assumed that she was a worker. And um, she turned out that no, she was a person who was choosing things for her family. And I just remember just this, such a feeling of welling up of, of emotion of just being so grateful that because she, she picked up like a Thomas the Tank backpack that we had just dropped off and she was so excited about it. And I remember thinking like, I wish I'd bought out all of Toys R Us, you know, to, to be able to help these people. Um, helping others helps us feel better, I guess is really how, kind of how I'm gonna say that. So if you can be a helper, if you can help your little children be helpers, um, even if they can do small things with you, if you can fold the laundry together, if you can make a meal together, um, if you can if you can do some kind of open-ended play together, um, it's so helpful. It helps you remember like why you got into this whole parenting gig in the first place, and sometimes that's hard to see. So, um, so trying to you know take advantage of this time that you've got with your kids. Um, I, one thing that I would suggest is um, less time on screens first of all because we're all all of our devices are wired up to like ping and let us know when the latest alerts are coming in from whatever news station we get or, or Facebook or Twitter or those kinds of places and that just keeps us kind of marinating in the awfulness of it all because what you're hearing about isn't great stuff right it's like oh here's another four cases in in Loveland Colorado and here's another you know awful thing happening somewhere else in the world um, if we can focus on um, the positives, uh, in other words, like finding some positive things in our in in our online stuff, and I'm going to share about a couple things in in a moment um, that that my friends have been helping me with. But in in general, trying to just avoid tech um, as much as possible. Um, sometimes it's great to just let the screen be a babysitter, um, and and there's definitely a place for that. But but trying to take a, at least a little while in these days that we're all home and stuck, kind of. To, um, to be screen free and having some open-ended play and discussion and, you know, um, trying to, to find the fun in this. I know it's not a particularly fun time um, and I'm right there with you um, in sympathy and empathy because I'm, I'm also here, you know, a little bit stuck. <laughs> and um, I think that, that it seems like a paradox, but the less time we spend on the internet or on screens, the more tuned in we are to what's happening right in front of us. And again, if we're focusing on what's right in front of us, we're not worrying about the future quite so much. So if you can do that, um, that's that's my advice. Of course, you're free to accept it or not, but that's my advice. Um, and then finally, I wanted to share some of my friends. So this morning when I was having my anxiety attack and it seemed like the world was just going to end right then and there and I would never get home and I would never see them. and. Um, I asked them, we've, we've had a thread going because everybody's got stuff going on. One, one, um, one of my dear friends had to cancel a trip out to California to see their granddaughter and, and their, you know, their, their daughter and um, you know, everybody's got worries and things going on and um, people are talking about their, their children's graduations being postponed. Um, you know, it's, there's just so much to, to sort of worry about. And I said, what are you, what are you, how are you being positive, I think is what I asked. And I just, I wanted to read some of the responses that they gave. So one was um, a, uh, and I actually wish I had kept track of this and I didn't, but um, one of the first things that happened is a friend of mine uh, sent a link to a, a YouTube video of all of the, a, a lot, a neighborhood's worth of um, quarantined Italians out on their balconies singing the national anthem. You know, and that just struck me as so, so positive and so wonderful. Um, somebody else, apparently the, the World Health Organization, uh, AKA WHO, has um, decided that, or has um, affirmed, I guess, that dogs cannot get COVID-19, which means that, um, you know, your dogs are, are free to go for walks or whatever, they're not gonna catch this disease. And, and um, it concluded, it was an Instagram post, and it concluded by saying, who let the dogs out, which just cracked us up around here. Um, and then uh, I wanted to share a couple of their a couple of their thoughts. So um, I plan to do some baking. We all gathered around the dining room table last night to spread out and stay and talk. And these are this is like parents with teens, um, which if you can get your teens to do that, that's that's pretty great. And it, I think it's, it would be easier with little kids, but teens will also do it if it's in the right environment. And so 
Um, she writes, we are definitely going to be playing some board games and organizing some things around the house. We've already agreed that dos is not twice as good as uno um, and keeping in touch with the important people in our lives. Uh, that's That was what one of our friends said. Another one said, um, oh, nice. This one's turned sideways on me. Awesome. All right, let's see if I can do this. Um, we are making a list of all the things we can get done during this time. All the yard work, ordering a dumpster and clearing out the garage, working on the garden, and then fun stuff like basketball and Scrabble with the boys. Again, teens. Um, hiking, movie nights, baking, etc. It helps to feel productive, I think. Trying also to enjoy the time with my mom. Um, this is a this particular family, they, her mom lives with them, and she's talking about how they've the mom is in quarantine, so they've taken her keys and... Um, you know, try to, and, and she is suggesting to me that I try to enjoy the time with my parents and try to be in the moment here um, because this is the time that we have with them, you know. And then finally, one of my friends says, um, I agree with our other friend. Keeping busy helps me. Sadie the dog needs love, walking, feeding, playtime. I took her to, to the kennel. Oh, we, they took her to the kennel before they decided to cancel a trip. And it was a long night for everyone without this dog. Um, and then, and then this mom writes, "I picked her up this morning." And um, you know, I've got other another friend. I think I took a picture of this one because I wanted to. Oh, and it's also unfortunately these are all like sideways. I'm so like they all look like this when they should be looking like that, and vice versa. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to get this one. Anyway, that la I won't. I won't bug you with that or bore you with that. But anyway, the last one says. Um, about how usually this time is not like they, they this is a family that is they're all out of the house seven days a week it's insane and what this mom said was we're looking forward to just having some downtime together which is something that they extremely rarely get and we're talking about kids are home from college because all the colleges are you know doing things online sending everybody home um it's 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 a complete disruption of usual routines and so i hope that helps you get a sense of like trying to stay positive and um and, and that, yes, this is, these are troubled times, and there's a lot to be um, concerned about, but, but the way to stay focused on, on getting through it and, and you know, being comfortable and happy is to, is to think about doing it together. Think about um, helping your neighbors and, and your extended family and even your own family, right? Getting your kids to be helpers. Um, being a helper yourself. Um, using that four, seven, eight breath or some other coping skills that you have, that you uh, know and have come up with. Um, and finally, focusing on what's right in front of you. That I think is probably the number one thing. Um, remembering that we can only deal with what's down the road, down the road. Right now, we got to focus on what's important, um, you know, on what's right in front of us and dealing with that. I really, really hope this helps. As you can tell, my voice is a wreck. <laughs> so I'm going to wrap up. Um, I thank you so much for listening and watching. Um, as I said, I'm going to keep going with updates, uh, you know, even, hopefully even after we're home again is my plan. Um, and you can go to weturnedoutokay.com slash weekly to get updates, to get notified, or, you know, I'm going to be sending these videos out over email. Um, and uh, if you are, um, you know, going to be listening to the rest of this podcast episode, well, then welcome, because we're headed for that right now. Um, until next time, I am Karen Lock Culp of weturnedoutokay.com and the We Turned Out Okay podcast. Wishing you, um, I mean, wishing you the best time possible as we as we get through this together, and um, hoping that all is well um, with you and yours. All right, cheers. Talk to you soon. Thanks for watching and listening, and on with the podcast if you happen to be listening. <laughs> Bye.